After the 2010 season, it appeared that the South Carolina football program was on the rise. In that same season, they won the SEC East and made it to the SEC title game for the first time ever, and their 9-win season was only the second time they've won 9 or more games since the year 2000. But that 2010 season was just the start of a successful 4-year period for the Gamecocks, as in the next 3 seasons from 2011 to 2013, they finished with 11 wins and a bowl win in each season. But after those grade 4 seasons, the program has struggled to find consistency. They have yet to finish a season with double digit wins since that 2013 season, and last year they finished at 4-8, and eight, missing out on a bowl game for the second time in 5 seasons. So what happened to this South Carolina team? And why have they not been able to build on their success? In today's video, we'll be looking at South Carolina's recent history and exploring what has led to their downfall. A good starting point would be the year where things started to change for the team, which was the 2014 season. Following a season where they once again finished with 11 wins and a bowl win, the Gamecocks would have a few questions moving forward. They lost two of the best players arguably in program history to the NFL Draft in Jadavion Clowney and Connor Shaw, but finding a replacement for Shaw was going to be difficult. Dylan Thompson would ultimately win the starting job and take over as QB1. Still, despite the uncertainty that comes with having a new quarterback, the team was very talented and opened the year ranked at number 9, so expectations were high and rightly so. They still had weapons on offense like Farrell Cooper and their defense was still pretty good. But in week 1 in the season opener against Texas A&M, South Carolina lost 52-28 at home and would be knocked down to number 21 as a result. That was a rough start to the new season, but the Gamecocks bounced back and won 3 straight to bump them back to number 13, including a win over number 6 Georgia at home. But that was the peak of their season as they would go 4-5 and five the rest of the way to finish at 7-6, losing to Missouri, Kentucky, Auburn, Tennessee, and the big one to Clemson. And 4 of those 5 losses would be by 1 possession or less, and for a team that was projected by many to finally reclaim the SEC East title, those close losses definitely hurt. But South Carolina would still end off their season with a bowl win over Miami to head into the 2015 season with some momentum. But 2015 is where things just continued to fall. Once again, they had a new quarterback in Perry Orth stepping in for Dylan Thompson who played well in his only season starting. But South Carolina was abysmal this season and they finished with a 3-9 record, only winning one game in the SEC over Vanderbilt. Their offense was among the worst in the nation where they only scored 21 points per game and the defense also had a drop in production. But during the season, South Carolina faced another big loss, but this is one that didn't come on the field. On October 13th, Steve Spurrier announced that he was resigning from the program and stepping down, okay. with co-offensive coordinator Sean Elliott taking over as the interim head coach. Spurrier spent basically a decade at the school and accomplished things unseen at the program, and losing him was huge. But it was about time for him to go due to age, so South Carolina just had to move forward. They would hire another former Florida head coach that offseason in Will Muschamp who had just recently gotten fired from Florida and served as Auburn's defensive coordinator in 2015. Kurt Roper and Travaris Robinson were also selected as the offensive and defensive coordinators respectively. Now there was hope on the horizon as South Carolina had once again captured a top 25 recruiting class according to 24-7 Sports which included 4 star quarterback Jake Bentley, so maybe South Carolina had finally found a real replacement for Connor Shaw. But, we already know how Will Muschamp is with developing quarterbacks, and in year 1 of 2016, Bentley played okay, throwing 9 touchdowns to 4 interceptions in a struggling offense that ranked 116th in the nation in scoring. The defense did tighten up and got better, and as a result, the Gamecocks finished at 6-7 and, and made a bowl game that season but lost in overtime to South Florida. Their most impressive win of the season happened to come at home to ranked Tennessee, where they won 24-21. Surprisingly, South Carolina built on the success they had in 2016, and in the 2017 season, they went 9-4 behind a good recruiting class and a top 20 defense. The offense did play a little better as they finally cracked the top 100 in offensive scoring for the first time in a few seasons, and with more experience, Jake Bentley started to play a little bit better. They won their bowl game over Michigan in the Outback Bowl and finished second in the SEC East, which was very surprising given the projections that the team had heading into the season. But with the offense still not performing up to par, they fired their offensive coordinator replacing him with Brian McClendon who had already been a part of the staff. The replacement worked as McClendon helped guide South Carolina's offense to 30 points per game in 2018, and Jake Bentley just continued to develop, throwing 27 touchdowns to 14 interceptions, with wide receiver Debo Samuel being his biggest target. However, the defense took a big step back this season, ranking 69th in the nation in points allowed with 27 points allowed per game. The team was off and on all season, winning one game and losing one the following week, but they were actually ranked in week 2 for the first time since Spurrier left, coming in at number 24 before losing to Georgia and never seeing the top 25 again. 
They could just never find consistency and lost two close games to Texas A&M and Florida that could have easily flipped the script on their season. And in the most recent 2019 season, South Carolina was expected to once again finish around the middle of the SEC East, but their chances in their season really took a hit when starting quarterback Jake Bentley went down with a foot injury that ended his season. Entering freshman quarterback Ryan Holinsky, who was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, but the offense just wasn't the same. Holinsky played well during the season and was actually better than Bentley in his freshman season, as he threw for 11 touchdowns to 5 interceptions and had over 2,000 yards passing, but this team just struggled and finished at 4-8 with 3 wins in SEC play. Their most impressive win was a midseason game against Georgia where they won 20-17 in overtime behind the play of Holinsky and also damaging Georgia's playoff chances in the process. However, this season with the loss of Bentley was almost expected and explained best by Paul Feinbaum from SEC Network when he stated that I don't think anyone could argue against the following statement that South Carolina has the hardest schedule in the country. It is absolutely brutal and there's no way getting around it. So knowing that you have Alabama, knowing that you have Georgia and Clemson, by almost everyone's projections, those are the number one, two, and three schools in the country. And now here we are in present day 2020 and this once promising South Carolina football program is struggling to find consistency. So what happened to South Carolina? I think the first and biggest thing that we can pinpoint is the departures that this team has had to deal with and the rippling effects that have come with it. With Steve Spurrier retiring, it meant that South Carolina was going to enter into a new era and of course finding a new coach to take over for one that had so much success at the university is going to take time and is a tough task to try and replace. Spurrier was able to guide this team to new heights and losing a guy like that is tough, especially mid-season. Also, the players they lost in this period were tough for the program to take as well. Of course, guys graduate after around four to five years, depending on if they're redshirt, but this program in general lost one of their best quarterbacks of all time in Connor Shaw, one of their best running backs of all time in Marcus Lattimore, one of their best wide receivers in Alshon Jeffrey, and one of the best high school recruits in the history of college football in Jadavion Clowney, who single-handedly made the South Carolina defense what it was. And if I told you that would happen for any school in general in a four-year span, it would be expected that there would be some down years after all of that. Another reason for their downfall would be finding replacements for the guys above. Now, South Carolina has been able to find playmakers at wide receiver in Debo Samuel over the past few seasons, and although he was no Alshon Jeffrey, he was still pretty good. But South Carolina has yet to find a running back with a similar threat to Marcus Lattimore, and it will likely take a while before they find someone like that. But that speaks more to the talent that Lattimore had, rather than South Carolina's ability to recruit, which has been very good considering the circumstances for the past decade. The Gamecocks have had a total of 26 players drafted from 2011 to 2016, which is the most they've ever had in a six-year span. They had some notable names selected such as Farrell Cooper, AJ Can, Stephon Gilmore, Melvin Ingram, and of course, Marcus Lattimore, Jadavion Clowney, and Alshon Jeffrey. That number just shows how much talent this team gained, produced, and lost. This was the golden era for South Carolina football, and they are just recovering from it. But the one guy whose name wasn't called on draft day was Connor Shaw, whose loss has been arguably the most impactful on the program. They just haven't been able to find his replacement, and although Bentley played well down the stretch, he just didn't have the same success that the Connor Shaw-led teams had. And Shaw, although his stats weren't eye-popping, his production on the field was underrated. Maybe Holinsky can be the next guy moving forward, but we will just have to wait and see. But the lack of being able to find consistent play at the quarterback position has hurt this team a lot, among many of the other replacements they've had to make, such as in the coaching staff. Since 2015, South Carolina has ranked in the top 100 of offensive scoring twice in five seasons, with one finish being at 99th and the other being at 57th, so nothing incredible offensively. They've moved on to their third offensive coordinator this past offseason since Spurrier left, so hopefully they can get an upgrade in that department, but I just don't know how much trust I have in a must-champ-led team heading into the future. He's just not performed at the level needed for the SEC both at Florida and now at South Carolina, and somehow the AD gave him a four-year extension off of a nine-win season, which includes a hefty buyout fee if South Carolina wants to move on. Now he could very well turn it around and for everyone's sake I hope they do, but it always seems like it's one thing or another with his teams. In Florida, he couldn't develop a quarterback nor coach them up for big games, and in South Carolina, there's been issues with the red zone offense where they've ranked near the bottom of the SEC in the past two seasons, an issue with turnovers and just flat out consistency on the field. At the end of the day, you have to hold the coaches accountable as well as the players, and right now, South Carolina's coaching staff needs to do a much better job and get the players ready to play and help them develop. There just needs to be more accountability held for the people in the coaching staff and the higher ups for the South Carolina football program. They had such a great four year span and everybody has failed to build on that. Nothing has come since those four years and there hasn't even been a great recruiting class since 2013. And as a result, they've just been left in the dust. Last but not least, we have the rise of South Carolina's rivals or at least their common opponents. Both Georgia and Clemson have risen to become top 10, even top 5 teams annually, which means that South Carolina has to play at least two very elite programs every season. 
Florida appears to be back as well being led by Dan Mullen so that's another team that you can count that has gotten better while South Carolina has stayed around the same if not gotten worse. But with Clemson in particular playing great every season, that just hurts South Carolina. They're losing more in-state recruits by the season and haven't beat Clemson in the last six seasons. Still, they were able to gain five-star in-state defensive end Jordan Birch in this upcoming recruiting class, so they aren't completely losing in the recruiting battle, but it's just no coincidence that South Carolina's best seasons were when they were beating Clemson to end the season off. Like we all know by now, college sports is just a game of highs and lows. Right now, South Carolina is recovering from that golden age of football that they got themselves into. Winning three straight bowl games, winning an SEC East title, and winning 11 games in three straight seasons is such a major feat for a school that has been middle of the pack since they've joined the SEC, and South Carolina is still finding ways to get back to that success. Recruiting is still going well given the circumstances, and maybe Muschamp or the next head coach can be the guy to lead the Gamecocks back to the top 25 annually. I personally think that South Carolina might need new leaders up top soon, and they just added a new offensive coordinator to fix their struggling offense, but I just don't think this program should settle for good enough. They have the recruiting resources and the region to be a great football program and build on the success that they had, and if Muschamp continues to be okay, they need to move on. They squandered that chance already to build on the success that they had before, but that doesn't mean that you can't just restart and find success in a new way. But as always, only time will tell if and when this South Carolina program can get back to that point. This has been a video on the South Carolina football program. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and as always, I will see you guys next time.